lips, I said, for the Lord, why don't you just hold the music for a moment? Come on, open up your mouth and bless him. Come on, open up your mouth and give him praise. Come on, the psalm said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Come on, you got something to praise him for. Come on, you got something to praise him for. I know you've been blessing God for a long time. But I promise you, if you can think about just for a second, something that God has done for you, that could nobody do for you but the Lord. I guarantee you, you can muscle up enough strength to tell him thank you just one more time. Come on, the devil need to hear you say thank you. That thank you need to be heard in your own ears. The enemy need to hear you say thank you. The devil needs to know that everything that he tried, in spite of what he's done, I still got a praise. I still got a hallelujah. I still got a glory to God. Come on, give him praise. Come on, let's go up in the Holy Ghost. Praise him out of yourself. Praise him out of yourself. Get out of your flesh. Keep praising him until your belly knows that you're magnifying God. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. A few more seconds. I'm not a robo cosia. He not on a mama mama. I'm not a robo cosia. Come on, a few more seconds. Come on, a few more seconds. Forget about what you got on. He gon' mess you up anyway. I'm not a robo cosia. He not on a bottle of cosia. Forget about your neighbor. He gon' knock them out too. He not on a little of cosita. Come on, your belly been waiting on this. Come on, your belly been waiting on this. Come on, your spirit man have been hungry and thirsty after a breakthrough in the spirit. Come on, give him a prize. Tonight is your night. Tomorrow is not promised. I gotta bless him. Hold up, Oshaya. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, mighty God. We serve a mighty God. Oh, on your way down tonight, turn around and tell three people, I still got my praise. I still got my praise. I still got my praise. Come on, tell three people, I've been through something, but I still got my praise. Oh, tell them I've been through a warfare, but I still got my praise. Come on, I don't know if there's anybody else in here that's been through what I've been through, but tell them I've been through the fire. As a matter of fact, I still smell like smoke, but I still got my praise. I'm not a little old son of a My skirt tail is singed with the warfare of Satan, but I still got my praise. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. Come on, the trucks are still there. I can still hear the hoofs of Satan's feet behind me, but I still got my praise. Somebody praise him. Yes, Jesus. Yes, God Almighty. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. That ain't a saying as what I know. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Oh, my God. As a matter of fact, make him out of a liar. Tell your neighbor, I still got the victory. Tell him I ain't got to see it. I ain't got to feel it. I'm blessing God because I know it. I'm no more shy. I ain't got to see it. I don't have to feel it. I'm blessing God because I know it. Because his word says it. Because he promised. And he's not a man that he should lie. I can stand on his word. I'm blessing him on credit. Because he, I've seen what he can do before. He's the same God yesterday. And today and forevermore. I gotta bless him. I'm gonna still praise him. Yes, God. Oh, my shut up, yeah. Yes, Jesus. Oh, you can take your seats if you can. My God from Zion. Well, get your Bibles and let us see. I know the hour is far spent in the first night. We're getting adjusted to the shipping and the moving, but I know y'all don't mind. 
Because I know y'all are going to keep the right spirit. I know you're going to keep the right spirit. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians. We're going to begin reading at the second chapter of 1 Corinthians. Beginning at the first verse. That means you can take your seats because I'm going to be reading line upon line tonight. Marcia, you can start with the, with the first verse. Everybody got it? Say amen. Because I want you to see this tonight. You got to see this tonight. Did you come to eat? Amen. Okay, then we're going to feed you. Thank you Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. As for myself, brethren, now I'm reading this out of the Amplified Bible, and you can follow along in, in your Bible, okay? Go ahead, read. As for myself, brethren, go ahead. When I came to you, uh -huh. I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony and evidence or mystery and secret of God. Now he said here, as for myself, brethren, and I'd like to stop there because I'd like to clarify uh, just exactly who the Lord has sent me to and I know that in the course of this meeting somebody is going to be saved and I do know that but there comes a time as a prophet of God when you get an assignment from the Lord you the Bible also allowed us to know through the study of scripture that really a prophet is really not allowed out of the chambers unless God has something to say yes. a prophet doesn't run revivals yes. A prophet just doesn't show up and just say, well, you know, I, I'm here and since I'm in town, can I preach? Yes, yes. When you open up your mouth, the Lord is constantly making me aware and keeping me focused on who I am in the gospel of Jesus Christ, in the body of Christ. And he began to say to me, you've got to understand and you've got to be careful because when I send you with the word, you are speaking in my place. In other words, the reason why, and some of you all are going to grab this and some of you are not, the reason why I'm taking my time to say that is because everything that God, God, is going to give me to say in these next few days it is a prophetic word so this cannot be the kind of service where you sit and you hear the word of God and you act as if oh wow you know that sounds good no I I'm prophesying to you Yes, 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 yes. Understand something. This is, this is your prophetic word. It is coming directly from God to you. Yes. And so he says here, when he starts the scripture out, that I'm talking to the brethren. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, my mother and my father uh, uh, are my parents. And, and so when, 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 when I was born, uh, I don't know if they knew who I looked like. But then as I got older, uh, people would say to me uh, on many occasions, you look like your mom. And, and then they would see my father and they would say, you favor your father. And, and that is natural because when you check the DNA, what makes up my, my physical character is the DNA of both my mother and my father. So when you look at me, I resemble my mother and I resemble my father. Now I have brothers and sisters and the reason why we are brothers and sisters is because we also share the same DNA. Am I right about that? So, and so I'm saying all this to say that I cannot quite understand why God would give us as for myself brethren and we are brothers and sisters in Christ but we don't favor God. You know, we, we, we say that we are the children of God but we favor the devil. Help us. Help us. Help out of stuff. We see how the load of amens get right there. I, I, oh, I'm a believer. I'm born again. But you don't look like God. You don't favor God. You don't talk like God. I, I, I just can't see God in you. Oh, y'all ain't going to say. Have you ever seen a family where they say, that's my sister. And you say, that's your sister right there. That don't, she don't look like none of y'all. And, and, and so as soon as that's said, what happens is it starts the person to question whether or not your daddy messed around or not. Or, you know, or whether or not your mama stepped out or not. And so what that's called is trying to claim a child trying to say that's Willie's baby and it really ain't Willie's baby you understand because the reason why you tell Willie that's his baby is because you want Willie to provide for that child so you psych Willie up and thinking that that is his child and that's the way we try to do God we try to psych God up talking about I'm your child because we want God to pay our rent and pay our light bill and heal us and make it all right but you know what God done check the DNA and we're not his
Why, why do you say that prophet is bottom? Because he said, my sheep, they know my voice. And can, can I just paraphrase this? And mess, they won't follow. He said, in, he said in the book of John, he said, when they hear my voice, good God have mercy, and I speak, they come out. I'm not getting no amens right there. Can I say that one more time? He said, when my sheep that are connected to my loins, that has my DNA. Oh, y'all ain't saying. See, a lot of times I, 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 I watch myself sometimes and I sit up and my brothers and my sisters say, you know, neither the older you get, the more you start to act like mama. Because I sit sometimes with my head on the side like my mother. Oh, I sit sometimes and I'll start, I'll start rocking like my mother. And I'll start doing things like my mother. And, 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 so, and so what God is saying here, he said, if you are mine, then when I speak, a word. I don't care what's going on in your life. There is something about the DNA that is in your body that begins to respond to the antidote for trouble. Are you getting what I'm saying? See, when you are a real believer and not just somebody that's just in church jumping and shouting and pretending, but when you got the same DNA that God has and trouble hits your back door, when God speaks to that situation and says, come out, can't nothing hold you in there, y'all. He said, because when you are mine, I speak and you come. So he's saying here tonight that you, you, if you are not a brethren, then you won't comprehend this. Then you won't understand nothing that I'm saying here tonight. You know, if you if you one of them people that just trying trying to be all cute, you just came out here because you came to see Prophet Spider. You already tricked, baby, honey. If you came here to see me, you already been deceived. Matter of fact, we need your seat because there's some people in the overflow room. You understand what I'm saying? So you know, you see, listen, you 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 will not even comprehend this because a real believer is able to look at Prophet Spider and say she ain't got nothing that I need. But it's what in her belly is what I come to hear. I come to hear from the God that's in her. So he says, brethren, sisters, you're going to have to hear this one in the spirit. I'm not coming down there because, oh, y'all ain't saying that. See, I heard him say to me a couple of weeks ago, he said, I come down to the sinner. But when I save you, I command you to come to me. He said, how many times do I have to, how many times do I have to come get you when you are a brother? And because when you are a brother, then your ears have been conditioned for, y'all ain't saying nothing, for the divine revelation of the almighty God. In other words, you hear English, but you can hear something else in between the English. And that's why I'm talking right now. And some of you all are jumping up and I'm not even finished with the message because there's something already happening in your spirit there is something already letting you know that your deliverance is at hand and I don't have to hear the end of the message because I already know that my help is already here read the Bible when I came to you uh -huh. I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony. I didn't come to you talking about the testimony and the evidence. Go ahead. Or mystery and secret of God. Or the mysteries and the secret of God. In lofty words of eloquence. Uh huh. Or human philosophy and wisdom. I didn't come to you with lofty words of wisdom and, and eloquence of, 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 of speech and wisdom. Go ahead. For I resolved to know nothing. No, no, no. Stop right there. Say that. Say that. Say that one more time. Say, I mean, and, and really, really put emphasis right here. Really, because this right here is going to help me tonight. Say that one more time. For I resolved to know nothing. I 
I have made up in my mind that I, Paul, have been to school and I know different languages and I've sat with the best of them and I, and I have sat in the synagogue. Honey, I'm somebody. Y'all don't know how educated I am. Oh, y'all don't know what, who, I mean, where I have been and all the knowledge that I have. But I didn't come to you with that kind of knowledge. He said, I made up in my mind that I tonight am resolving to know nothing. And, I, and then that thing just got me the other day because then I started hearing God say, that's what's wrong with the body of Christ. They know too much. They think they know too much. He said, but who am I looking for? And who am I sending you to Chicago after? He said, I'm sending you after somebody that's already thrown up their hands that said, God, I just don't know. You know, I don't know what else to do. I mean, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Oh, y'all, I, I don't know where else to go. I'm resolving in myself right now to know nothing. 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 Jesus. Woo! Read. Among you except Jesus Christ. Ah, for I resolve to know nothing, to be acquainted with nothing. Watch this. To make a display of nothing. The knowledge of nothing. Watch this, y'all. To be conscious of nothing among you except Jesus Christ. And I don't mean that right there to some of y'all because y'all just think that means say. The Messiah and him crucified. Uh, I made it my business to hang out with people. As a matter of fact, I didn't, I didn't even understand what, what, what God was, was, was saying on my, way, on my way to church tonight. And I was sitting in the back of the car. He said, he said, tell them when you get to the house of the Lord that where they are right now has been a divine interruption. Some of y'all don't understand what I mean. Gotta say one more time to your spirit, get it. A divine interruption. words in the direction Pastor Scott that you were headed in that it looked like you was going along okay now, now, now this ain't everybody and then all of a sudden everything just turned upside down and then I hear the Lord say no 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 don't start rebuking the devil baby because this is a divine interruption now Satan ain't doing this one. Oh y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's why, that's why, that's why he puts you in the position where you are in a stupor. And then every watch it, watch it. And then and then and then and then he surrounds you with people that don't have the answer. They're all close to you. And they all love you. And they're your best friends. But they don't have the answer. Yo, 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 I, maybe, maybe I'm the only one that's actually been there. You go to your mama and she ain't got the answer. You go to your prayer partner and y'all been interceding, but God ain't saying nothing. Oh, y'all, are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? He said, you look to the left and you can't find nobody. And all of a sudden you find yourself in a deaf and a dumb spirit. And all you got to hang on to is a promise. All you got to hang on to is a prophecy. You know God prophesied it, but all of a sudden you don't know nothing. Mama are divine. Woo! It's divine. What is what is what are you talking about? What is what are you what are you talking about? Uh-uh. I hear him say, stop asking, stop asking me. Stop asking me to fix this. Stop, stop asking me to work this out. I keep 
hearing him tell me. He said, tell them, stop asking me to work this out. I am working it out. I'm not working it out the way you want me to work it out. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. He said, you got a plan, and I got a plan, but your way is not my way, and your thoughts are not my thoughts. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, God, this I want you to fix it. Okay, God, tell you what I want you to do now. Okay, I need, I need you to give me seven thousand dollars by Friday, and then I want you to, uh, I want you to fix it over here, and, and then God, uh, now, now by by next week, you know, I want you to be the uh, worked on my boss, so uh, he can give me that raise so I can have it to kick in by Thanksgiving, because then you know by that time I be done got caught up on my mortgage, and so you understand? And see some of y'all in here right now that's got projects before the Lord. Okay, God, now. Now, now, if the bank over here will just, will just give me this kind of loan, and then if I can just get them to say yes over here, and then what happens? God, shut it all down. And he, watch this, and he puts you in what I call a, a, a mini miss. A mini miss is when you go somewhere and people say, if you just had a came yesterday, I could have done it. Or if you just, if you had 20,000 by Thursday, I could have worked it out. And, and, and y'all ain't saying nothing. Because see, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm the only one that's, that's actually been through that. Well, you know, if you had this kind of paperwork, we could have got this done for you. And so then you say, well, God, what are you trying to do? He said, I'm trying to bring you right here. I'm trying to get you right here. To the point that you know nothing That you are acquainted With nobody that can help you Jesus My God My God My God He said that one got to go down in your belly a minute. Hey, can I tell you something? Can I prophesy something to you? It is not getting ready to be over no time soon. Oh, y'all, y'all ain't hearing me. Oh my God, I see, I see, I see right there. I see right there. I see faces drop. Because the proper lie is, touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor you're coming out. You know the proper lie is, go ahead and tell your neighbor in three days God said I'm coming out. See, 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 now see, that's the thing, that's the thing. To, that's, that's what you call Christian performance. To tell a lie to people. And tell them, go ahead, tell your neighbor, God said I'm coming out of this thing. No, he's not saying that. He's not telling me to come all the way from New York City to tell you that. He's telling me to tell you that it is purposeful that you stay right where you are. Because I am working something not out in your pocket, but in your spirit. I'm trying to get you to another level. Receive it, baby. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it, baby. I hear the Holy Ghost say, honey, if you receive that right now, he is strengthening your belly for the journey. Oh, y'all don't want nobody to preach like that because y'all want to come out right quick. But God said, I want to strengthen somebody's belly because your belly is too weak. You can house what it is I'm trying to give you because you won't suffer. You won't. You won't. You won't go through. He said, you better understand something here tonight that what you're going through ain't about you. I know about you. It ain't about you. Lady right there in that white suit. It ain't about you. Oh, yeah, lady with that hat on. Put your hands on that woman's shoulder. He said, it ain't about you, honey. A lot of y'all, what you're going through right now, oh, Lawanda, it's not about you. But it's about where I'm about to take you. It's about the soul.
souls that's trapped in your loins. When I save you, I planted seeds in your loins. And you gotta have a deliverance for the people and the souls that I have given you. You gotta have the power to look at their lives and say, come out. And they come out. I can't do that if you don't go through. He said, that's why, that's why, that's why I can't hear your cry, because I hear a bigger cry. Oh, my Jesus. Y'all ain't hearing me. He said, that's why I can't hear your groan, because I hear a bigger groan. I wish I had just somebody that's willing to go through for God. He said, I can't see your tears, because I see the tears of rhinos. I see the tears of prostitutes. I see the tears of homosexuals. I see the tears of lesbians. As a matter of fact, can I bring it on in? I see your sister's tears. I see your mother's tears. I know the people that are trapped, and I gotta have a body. I gotta have something that I can work my power through. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Marcia, go. Go to go to one in twenty six. Go to one in twenty six. For consider your own call, brethren. Ah, 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 you hear that? You hear that? You hear that? You, you, wait, 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 wait. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Do you hear that? Sister, the Lord is calling me to be an evangelist. And my Lord is calling me because the hands of the Lord are on my life. And can you tell me where my ministry is? And can you help me? Because I want to be used by God. I believe the Lord called me to preach. I believe God gave me a street ministry. Can you help me? And I believe I got an anointing on my life. And the reason why I'm coming out of your ministry, I believe you can help me. I believe, hey, 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 stop that. He said, consider your call. Ah, Lord. See, understand something. I got I got I got to help you with something that I never understood. If he's going to take you to the nations, and he's going to take you far out in the spirit, then distance is determined by depth. It's like he puts your life like a bow and arrow. And the distance that you will go is the depth that the arrow is pulled back. So here you are being deceived by the devil thinking that you being pulled back and pulled down. When he's actually setting you up. And some of y'all want to go far, but you can't stand the poor back. Oh, y'all don't want me to teach this tonight. Lord, I can't get nobody to say nothing here. I can't, I can't, I can't get nobody. I can see if I want to jump to the back of this church, I can't stand right here and jump. Anybody know the thing about long jumping? You gotta start running from where? back there and pick up some speed you understand what I'm saying oh y'all see see this right here may be the line you gotta jump after but you gotta go way to the back of the church and start running and picking up speed I hear what I'm saying and that's what God does honey he slaps everything down he slaps all the props from underneath your feet he messes with your bank account he messes with your family he's I'm gonna get this courage honey I'm pulling you way back I'm giving you some distance because when it's time for you to jump oh y'all ain't saying that, that you can't stop Nobody when they flying in the air. Watch this. Watch this. He said, Read the Bible. For what? For consider.
brethren. Aha! Not many wise according to human estimates and standards. He said, not many. Watch this, y'all. Not many of you. Y'all better look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Can I prophesy and preach? Jesus. He said, in my Amplified Bible, not many of you were considered to be wise according to human estimates and standards. Can I say it one more time? Not many of you were considered to be wise according to human estimates and standards. Not many influential and powerful. Not many of high and noble birth. Can I break that down? See your mom and them, y'all was just booking them that lived off of Madison Street. No, then none, none of us come to no real prestigious family. And, and some of y'all, can I just tell the truth? I'm tell you what God is showing. You know, some, some of y'all was on that short bus going to school. You know, the short bus is for them little retarded people. And so, and so, if you now don't laugh because if you go back and if I had a computer here and I was able to tap into the school system and pull up some of y'all report cards, some of y'all was in the EMH classroom. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying now. So a lot of us was never considered to be that smart. The Bible said you weren't born somewhere where you would merit. Watch this. This call that's on your life. That's what I like about God. Because my God, he looks over and finds people that's been born in families where the mama is alcohol, daddy is alcohol, sisters on drugs, and brothers messed up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Everybody in your family tore up. Ain't nobody about nothing. And he looks over like the Bible says in the book of Psalm. And he picks you out of your family. He picks you out of everybody. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. He looks over at you and say, my hand is on you. You know what I love about it? Because if we said me, I mean, you can't be talking to me, God. You can't. I mean, wait a minute. You can't be. You can't. I ain't never even finished high school. You can't be saying you're going to take me all over the world. You can't. I mean, you can't be saying you can't make, give me my own business. I only went to the ninth grade and I had two babies before I turned 17. You can't be talking about me, God. I'm, matter of fact, right now, I got AIDS in my body. You can't. And you still sending this woman to town and I'm in this service and this woman just got through prophesying and saying that every word that's coming out of her mouth is of you. And the doctor said I might die. And you sending this woman to prophesy to tell me that I'm not going to die. Wait a minute, God, you can't be talking to me. You can't be saying that you got a ministry for me. God, you can't be saying you can me to bless my life. You cannot be saying you can me to change my life and turn it upside down. I'm not the one. Remember, God, I was born in the ghetto. Remember, God, I don't have any money. My family is not famous. And God is saying, that's right, baby. You're the exact one I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody that the world has looked at and said ain't going to be nothing. He said in the 27th verse, are you with me tonight? Are you hearing this? Are y'all getting this? Let me look, 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 let me look. All right, all right, all right. He said, no, for God, now watch this, this got me. He said, no, for God selected, deliberately chose. Jesus. Ooh. He on purpose. He on purpose waited till I was a big mess. He deliberately. God, that's that's it. He selected. Mm, I don't think I'm saying he didn't just say he didn't, see the service just didn't go for it. And everybody just got happy. He said, "Come on, anybody want to be saved?" And you just happened to came. Mm. He selected. Okay, wait a minute. He went all the way back in your data. 
Great great grandmama, nervous breakdown. Great dad and granddaddy killed himself. Mama on alcohol. Daddy, okay. She'd been molested as a child. Molested more than one time by more than one uncle. Been on drugs, alcohol, in the streets, been homeless. Let me add that up. What does it add up to? Zero. That's the one. What in the world is foolish to be put the wise to shame and what the world calls weak to put the strong to shame that's why he selected you and he said and God also selected deliberately chose what in the world is low born and insignificant now this one right here and branded and treated with contempt you got a title You've been branded. Y'all, they say, when they see you coming. Oh, you know she a hooker. You know she a prostitute. You know. You know she a slept with everybody in the neighborhood. Oh, you know he ain't no good. You know he got babies all over town. I don't think you understand. I can't use you until you get branded. Can't get nobody to see that. I can't do nothing with you until your name get messed up. Ooh, y'all ain't seen that. Can't get nobody. Understand. Pastor Scott, do you understand that? Do you understand that? I can't. I can't manifest my glory in you until everybody. See, y'all said. Y'all said. Y'all. Y'all said the world turn against you. No, 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 baby. He said, I can't do nothing with you until the church world don't want you. Because as long as they want you, and as long as they think you're wonderful, then I can't get no glory. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He said, but I got to set you up. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here until don't nobody want you. He said, because when I get ready to do what I'm about to do in your life, ain't nobody going to be able to say that they get the credit. Why not you? You, watch this, watch this, watch this. 29th verse said, So that no mortal man should have pretense for glory and boasting in the presence of God. But watch this, when you go back over to the second, second chapter, he said this. Lord, this thing hit me. And I was passed into a state of weakness and fear and dread and great trembling after I had come among you. Come on, somebody hear this. And my language and my message were not set forth in persuasive, enticing, and plausible words of wisdom. But they were in demonstration. People are sick and tired of us talking about we're believers. Even the believers are sick and tired of us talking about we're believers. I can't get nobody to hear that right now. Can I just tell some truth in here? Ain't nothing happening in the church, baby. I'm even bored myself. Y'all don't want to tell the truth in here. I'm tired of the choir. I'm sick of the praise and worship team. I'm tired of the opening scripture. I'm tired of the same old message. I'm not getting no amens right here because I know I 
got some church people in here. But you know what? I'm tired of being able to stay at home on Sunday mornings and look at my watch and be able to tell you, oh, what's going on? Oh, I got time to curl my hair again because they in praise and worship right now. Oh, yeah, I got time to go by McDonald's and get me a little Mickey Mac sandwiches because pastor ain't up yet. Oh, I got time. I'll get there before he gets through preaching. I can clock the service. But God is saying that is the reason why the services have dried up because the preachers have lost their edge because they know too much. They got too much of a connection. The good old boys club is ruining the house of God. He said that's why I got to reach out now in the audience. I got to pick up a nobody that's got a hunger and a thirst after God because the power He come to the Boshaya because God done messed around and found a prostitute and put her on her knees and turned into an intercessor. And I'm going to tell you something before this year is out, there's about to be an explosion that's about to hit this city. There's about to be a revival that's getting ready to break out. And you better get on your face because you're going to mess around and miss God right in the church. You're going to mess around and miss the anointing right in the church. I said, well, how? How am I going to miss it? How am I going to miss it, Mama Hazel? Because you're going to know too much. Ooh, Jesus. You're going to know what make them shout. He come out of the most You're going to know what make them speak in tongues. He said, you got the church system. But how about this? How about the opening prayer? I'm going to knock you out under the power. How about pastor ain't going to be able to preach? Because he's going to be stuck in his office on his knees. How about I'm going to knock him out across his desk? And he's not going to be able to get up. Y'all don't want to hear me tonight. You don't want to hear what God is saying. But I hear the Holy Ghost saying that the Bible said that the people of God are saying that I belong to Apollos and I belong to Paul but the Bible said aren't you not immature to talk about what church you belong to I want to ask you something who cares what the title is your church is I want to ask you something who cares who your pastor is but the Bible said that some water but oh my God and some plant but the amplified Bible said but all the while it was God that was making it grow it was God that was bringing the increase and that thing hit my spirit and that's when God told me he said that's what's wrong with the church they done got to the pastor they done got to the evangelist but don't nobody want to get to God that's why we ain't growing that's why we're not increasing that's why the power's not there that's why the anointing is low because we done got to a man but we have not got to God turn around and I know you may not want your neighbor to talk to you like this but you gotta prophesy tonight you gotta tell your neighbor neighbor I'm sick of you oh come on here church tell your neighbor I'm sick of you I'm tired of your shout I'm tired of your dance as a matter of fact if you don't want nothing from God in your belly get out of my way cause I'm tired of the preacher I'm tired of the church I'm ready to get to God I need something in my belly He said here, he said, he said, look at you. Y'all don't want me to tell you this. Look at yourself. Y'all don't want me to say this. Take a real good look at yourself and come on and grade yourself. Let's take a report card. Let's do the math here. 
let me ask you something how many songs does it take to get you out your seat oh come on let's do the math here how many songs does it take in praise and worship to get you on your face let's do the math here what kind of person is you if your favorite praise and worship leader don't show up that sunday what is your attitude like if the organist decide not to come to church what is your attitude like well baby let me tell you something when i think of the goodness of jesus i don't care if the organist decide to quit this sunday i still got a praise i still got my joy i'm still going at the god look at here sit down sit down he said here Demon demonstration here we go 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 tell my cousins won't come to church with me you won't come won't you come to church with me for what he tell my auntie won't you come to church with me for what where is the demonstration y'all ain't talking back again where is the pastors and the preachers and the evangelists and the teachers that's walking in a power that can walk up to people and see that they're full of demons and tell those demons to cut out well y'all y'all ain't saying nothing we done turned the church into a big counseling session but you can't counsel the devil it's time to get the power back in the church are you hearing what i'm saying y'all don't want me to preach it tonight but we too low y'all our praise is too low right now i'm telling you right now the holy ghost is telling me to tell you tonight your praise is too low your prayer life is too low your fasting is too low your dedication is too low i can't do nothing with you you know too much i'm ready to find somebody that's willing to die 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 And Jesus and Jesus sought no no I'm gonna help somebody right now and Jesus sought no reputation for himself you don't understand what that is when Jesus was walking the earth and he was being glorified by the people oh he turned water into wine oh my god look at what he did oh my god he healed a little girl Look at what he did. He took two fish, five loaves of bread, fed five thousand. You know what God said? Too much glory. Now it's time to die. So before he went to death, they went into a gossiping mode about him. Oh Jesus. He called himself a king. Don't you know they had to destroy his personality? What they were doing was, good God. God was using their mouths to tear away his outer person. Can I preach to somebody? He was using their mouths to rip away his outer image. Oh, can I preach to somebody? He was using the tactics of the devil to tear down Jesus' image, Luana, because trapped behind that image was a glory that was time to be revealed. And God said the glory can't come out because your image is in the way. So I gotta do to you what I did to Jesus. I gotta gather up a people to tear down your image, to tear down your looks, to tear down your character. And as the flesh begin to peel away, I see a light that's popping forth. And God said, here it comes. Here comes the glory. The more you suffer, the more they talk about you, the more they do you wrong. It's not the enemy. It's God trying to get the glory out. Somebody better start shouting. Somebody better start glorifying. If trouble is in your life, 
Shata. Who my shit? I didn't understand it. The last two years, when I was going through the fire, I said, God, what's going on? He said, This thing is not to the death of your ministry, but that the glory of the Lord might be revealed in you. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. When I look at the body, he said in his word he said and my language and my message were not set forth in persuasive and enticing plausible words of wisdom but that were for demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power a proof by the spirit and power of God watch as you operating on me and stirring in the minds of the hearers and the most holy emotions thus persuading them. Watch this. So that your faith might not rest. Man, I could stop right there. Because that's what's done happen to some of y'all. Y'all done got stuck in somebody else's testimony. God done spoke and told you that I'm getting ready to work a miracle, Pastor Africa. God done spoke and told you that I'm giving you Maywood. God done spoke and told you that I'm taking your church in a way 10 years ago that is not going to be traditional. God done spoke and told you that I'm doing a new thing, that I'm changing it. It's going to be a Christian center. It's going to be a place where black and white can come and worship but I'm going to tell you what happens to us we get stuck with people that ain't never did it before and we start listening to how they did it but God said I shut the doors because I'm going to do this this time not your buddies and not your friends I'm going to bring you through it are you hearing what I'm saying to y'all some of y'all sitting here tonight and God done spoke a word over your life but I hear the Holy Ghost saying that this is prophetic. Put your fingers in both of your ears and take them out. And God said when you take them out, he's going to turn a deaf ear to the things of the world. And you're only going to be able to hear God because this thing that I'm about to do in your life, your mama don't understand. Your daddy don't understand. It's a mystery. It's a divine interruption. It's your next level. It's your next anointing. You better give him a shout. Now, now I didn't see this. I didn't see this. Now when I get me, when I get me, when I get me some sleep at night, I'm a big priestess. But I didn't see this. Perry, because he said, he said right here, he said, he said, he said, Sam, he said, yet, when we are among the full grown spiritually, mature Christians, who are ripe in understanding, watch this y'all, we do impart a higher wisdom. Oh, Jesus. When we start getting around ripe, mature people of God that's done seen God make a way out of nowhere. Y'all better stop hanging around all these chumps in the church that ain't never had no miracle to have y'all they saying that. See, y'all got to understand. Y'all got to understand the whole Bible principles. And sometimes it's right on our face and we miss it. Honey, I don't care. Mary, Mary was having herself a good time. But God said, no, 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 baby. You got to get out of here. And you got to go find Elizabeth. You got to go find somebody that's having the same miracle that you had. You got to have it. Oh, y'all ain't saying. You got to go find somebody that's about to deliver a miracle just like you. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Why do you think God brought me in town this weekend? He said, because it's time for Mary to come to the house of Elizabeth. Elizabeth, because the Bible said Elizabeth had not heard and had not felt John the Baptist leap. She didn't know whether or not he was dead or alive. And many of y'all walked in here tonight and you didn't know whether or not your vision was dead or alive. You didn't know whether or not God was still going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. But when I hit the floor and the anointing came down, your baby started leaping. I wish I had somebody in here that understand what God is doing. He brought me here to wake your baby up. He brought me to tell you uh, that in your loins uh, it's 
John the Baptist is the forerunner. Are you hear what I'm saying? And the first shall be last. And the last shall be first. Somebody better give him a praise. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. Who am I preaching to tonight? It ain't dead, it ain't dead. The Holy Ghost just told me to keep saying that. He said, as many times as I say it, it's coming back alive. The word is coming back alive. The money is coming in place. The divine connection is about to happen in your life. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. Your help is on the way. Your miracle is on the way. Your divine connection is coming behind. Your divine interruption. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. You better pat your belly. You better get your stomach. You better wake your spirit up. You better tell the devil he's a liar. I'm going through all the way. I'm not going to stop. I'm pressing forward toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. It ain't dead. Oh. Some of you understand this. Some of y'all don't understand this. But can I tell you what I just saw? Can I tell you what I just saw? Can I tell you what I just saw? It's gonna blow your mind. I just saw a vision. When I kept hollering, it ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. I just saw a vision. And I heard the Holy Ghost say that they're tired and they are weary from the battle and the struggle. Watch this. But when I start hollering, it ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. It ain't dead, it ain't dead, it ain't dead. You don't understand, baby. Y'all don't understand. But the vision and the promise is powerful than the person. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said the vision and the promise is more powerful than the shell that it lives in. When they got through beating Jesus' flesh down, when the flesh got through dying on the cross, they picked up the flesh with the vision in the flesh. They picked up the body with the purpose in the body. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying here. And they took it to the grave. But guess what happened? The purpose jumped out of the body. Left the body there. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And got up and went into hell. And took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. You don't understand something. Baby, maybe you can't go. But the vision that's in your belly. It's been anointed to go to hell and back. Honey, you ain't about to cave in. The devil ain't about to overtake you. Because you got purpose in your belly. Because you got an assignment on your life. And your assignment is going to outrun your depression. Your assignment is going to outrun the lies. Your assignment is going to, oh my God, who am I preaching to? Your assignment is going to outrun the attacks of the devil. Your assignment is going to be able to stand against the wiles of Satan. Having done all to stand, 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 stand. It's not me that's standing. It's my vision that's standing. It's my anointing that's standing. It's my purpose that's standing. I can't stand, but the vision shall forever stand. Somebody say yes. I read it today. I'm paraphrasing. He read it. He said, Y'all don't understand. He said, Tell me, understand. He said, I show forth mercy to my anointed. Y'all ain't hearing that. Y'all ain't hearing that. You ain't hearing that. He said, I'm showing forth mercy to people that I have anointed. God, I can't get nobody to say that. What well, problem is, Bob? You don't know where I've been. You don't know how I messed up. You don't know what I did, baby. I don't care. How do you anoint it? I show sure forth mercy to my anointed. Are you hear what I'm saying? So what am I trying to say? When you want to quit and you want to backslide, your anointing won't let you give up. Y'all ain't 
saying nothing. As a matter of fact, on your way tonight to the house of the Lord, the devil talked to you in your car and told you why you even coming. What you praising God for? And the more you sat there in a stupor and a depression, you told your own self, I might as well give up. But before you knew it, again your own wheel. You heard Pastor Tom singing and your hand went up and you had to look at your hand and say, why are you up? I'm in a depression. But guess what? The hand is connected to a purpose. Good God have mercy. You found yourself jumping and said, why am I jumping? But I found out that my jump and my leap is connected to purpose. And when I want to stop, the purpose will run me when I want to quit, the purpose will shout me. When I want to give up, the purpose will make me holler. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the scripture come to mind as I close tonight that I reckon that the suffering of this present world is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Somebody, if you know tonight that glory is about to be revealed, you better go to running and jumping. You better go out of your seat. You better go to praising God. Give him a shout in here. church praise y'all ain't saying nothing that's a christian praise y'all ain't saying nothing that's a church of god in christ praise y'all ain't a child of god that's a monument of praise oh you hear what i'm saying but i'm talking about somebody that realizes tonight that the devil almost made me miss my promise i'm talking about a radical praise i'm talking about praising god in a way that you never have you better do something that you ain't never did before because God is about to do something that he ain't never done before are you hearing what I'm saying you better give him a shout
in the wet of the devil. You better 